the first part we spoke about the seeming lame duck presidency or the inaction or lack of uh, powers to deal with elements of corruption within the government and that is from the presidency the show of helplessness from the beginning of the week where the president spoke at state house and uh, passionately expressed why he finds it hard to fight this uh, graft uh, vice in the country and he's tried within his administration to do so so we have in studio dr karuti kanyinga he is from the institute for development studies at the university of nairobi and has been writing a lot about issues on development and even the fight on corruption thank you for joining us this evening sir and happy mashujah day to you and first of all from what you saw on tuesday throughout the week as well how sincere do you think the president was in showing his frustration in the fight against corruption uh, let me begin by saying that uh, I personally, from uh, where I sit and after watching the president for a while now on this uh, fight against corruption, um, I've, I've got a conviction that he's very sincere in the fight against corruption. Um, but uh, what I'm convinced about is that uh, the president could be alone in fighting corruption because he doesn't seem to be getting the support, not even from the political leaders next to him, does it seem to be getting the support from uh, uh, leaders in various key institutions of government? Doesn't seem to be getting key support even from polit uh, politicians within and outside parliament. And I am convinced that what we seem not to be seeing uh, is a war against the war against corruption. But someone would say, a layman right. watching this would say, he's a president. Uh, we should see some heads rolling if indeed he knows there's some elements of corruption within his administration. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I shouldn't defend the president on this, but right. I think what you need also to realize as a Kenyan uh, society, the constitution has reduced the powers of the imperial presidency. Um, we have seen the president ordering people to go to Kiganjo and the court to say, no, you cannot do that. Uh, so we are living in the old mindset of saying that this is what needs to be done and this is what needs not to be done. So um, we are in a presidential system and we are in a, a, a system where the president is highly restrained. What we seem to be uh, lacking is the goodwill from various other institutions, including institutions around the president himself. Now, the other thing we need to recognize is that we have, a, because we never took action on corruption from the very beginning, when the new government, came, when, when his government came to power, yeah. never pronounced itself on corruption, never pronounced itself clearly on the rule of law, and therefore that created an opportunity for people to do things um, uh, uh, in, in, in Vinjas, if one can, 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 can say that. But this would definitely paint his administration in bad light, and anyone in his good mind would want to at least give the best picture of what his government stands for, and the president definitely wouldn't let this pass him. Uh, he would have to do something about it. No, l l let me be, uh, be honest and say that I never saw them committed to governance issues from the very beginning. This government was not committed to governance, was committed much more on social development. So the yes. chicks have come to roost. Um, and it is usually very difficult for anyone to take very hard decisions when you are going to uh, towards the end of your first term. Mm -hmm. If the president were to win the election in 2017, um, uh, he, can, he would have a window of opportunity for about six months before, um, I mean, w during which he can take very hard decisions. But between today and the next general election, he has very limited things to do. He cannot do much because of restraints from uh, different uh, 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 signs. But don't forget also that uh, um, virtually everyone, including the opposition, have been digging, uh, dipping their fingers into the till. And that's what makes it extremely difficult, actually, uh, to deal with the fight against corruption because even the opposition itself doesn't have the moral authority. It's not like in the old days when we would say the opposition can provide the guidance against, uh, on certain reforms. Would you term, would you term their response as having been just political rhetoric? Because also the, the following day after what the president said at State House, uh, the leader of opposition said that the president and his administration has failed miserably in a fight against I, I think the opposition is just playing game here under rhetoric because they have caught to come clear about the counties that are in control of the opposition. Uh, what kind of counties do they have? They wouldn't have actually taken the last three years uh, to demonstrate that counties that they control are very different and this is how they would like to govern the country if they were to come to power. Nothing prevents them from fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. Nothing prevents them from doing better development in the county governments that they control in this country. But the opposition is the mirror image of the government that they, they, they seem to be criticizing. There was the uh, seeming uh, interest or intention to try to call Kenyans uh, to either uh, bring up their 
collective effort and voice to fight graft. And uh, the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister said that he is going to call Kenyans and give suggestions on the fight, the way forward to fight uh, corruption uh, besides the government's efforts, if indeed the government is not going to do anything about it. Do you think they'll have any uh, progress in doing this? Um, uh, uh, Kenyans are convinced that all leaders in this country are the same. And therefore, to mobilize all Kenyans against, other, against everyone becomes extremely difficult. But I would say, I would say that whoever uh, will be able to mobilize Kenyans against the fight against corruption, our fight against corruption, uh, is the one who will stand up and say that we are going to a 2017 general election. I would not like my political party to have members who have, been, who have committed any crime, to have members who have got any case in court, to have members who have abused public funds, and we want clean, gov uh, clean government. If the president were, were to wake up and say that Jubilee Party is going to be a clean party, we do not want leaders who have got a criminal case, we do not have, want to have leaders who have broken any law in the past, we do not want leaders who have a case in court, I'm telling you, he's going to have new leaders uh, that can fight co co corruption later on. Uh, even if the opposition were to do the same and say that code, in code we are saying we do not want anyone who has ever been commit, uh, who has ever committed crime, who has ever done this and that. That's what we will need. That's what we shall need when a new, when we have got a new widow of opportunity to do things. I must repeat here that the widow, of, uh, the widow to fight corruption for any new government does not last more than six months. All right. And, and speaking about uh, this first six months of the administration, if they were to listen in and take your advice, what do you think is, are the first top priority areas that they should, action points that they should be uh, going for? Of course, the first thing to do is to ensure that you have jailed people uh, from the previous government, I mean from, from the previous uh, government, meaning uh, uh, the previous elections. Um, uh, the governors, get into the governors and just start uh, putting them in, mm -hmm. get into the MCAs and start jailing, uh, putting them in. Um, but we must admit that if the judiciary, if the DPP, um, if the anti-corruption uh, uh, agency doesn't function, then you may not have an opportunity to do good investigations is and it, put it, them in. Is that practical with the political uh, loss that would be there? I mean, jailing uh, if, those who support if, if you parts. jail people in this country, if you jail people, it does not matter who you jail, actually your approval rating goes up. Today's President Kenyatta's approval rating is higher than any other, uh, other than, than anyone else before. Uh, it's uh, over 70 percent, those people uh, who approve of, uh, of him. Perhaps it's because there is no alternative. But 70 percent is not a small thing. So, so if you are get to get out of the way and say that I want to put it, people in jail, that's a political sacrifice that you are making and people give you the support that you require. Kenyans the want to see actions. And if the president were to take action even on his own people, I think the president would have a very, very good high return, uh, return chance. He would have more support from all corners of the country because that's the kind of commitment that is required. Well, besides people that? want to see sacrifice. Yes. And people want to see sacrifice not from your political enemies but from your political friends. Okay, and from that, from that, uh, besides the jailing, what else needs to be a priority action point? Of course, put a robust system of improving on moral conduct of the Kenyan society. We are in a situation now where corruption has become not only co uh, complex, but it's widespread. It's there are common in churches, it's in primary schools, it's in secondary schools, and then we have got also to tame the greed behavior. There is no single Kenyan today who is in public service who is not talking about salary increases. And this came, of course, because politicians were the first people to increase their salaries in Parliament. Yes, yes. So there is greed everywhere in this country, and I think we are talking about uh, a moral crisis. We are in a situation where we are talking about a moral crisis. And I think if I were the president, I would begin with a national dialogue on morality in this country. That's right. the beginning point. If we don't do that, we are sinking as a nation. It's, it's, it's really spreading and spreading very fast. Moral decadence is very, very rapid. Uh, growing. Earlier you mentioned that uh, the powers were taken somewhat in uh, the review of the Constitution uh, from the President and what he could do. So are you hinting that perhaps we need to get back to that point? No, where we cannot go back to that bad period of authoritarianism. Uh, we must live with what we accepted. We accept him to have a President who, who is restrained. Because if you don't restrain that power, then it can easily be abused. And it's not a bad thing that we have reduced those powers of an imperial president because these powers were deposited into various constitutional commissions and independent bodies. If these bodies were to do their work right, we wouldn't be talking about the failure of the president to, do, to fight corruption. If the anti-corruption commission 
the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission were to do its job right, mm -hmm. we would not be here discussing corruption. But the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has failed, A, on issues of ethics in this country. They have allowed, you have seen how MPs behave, yes. people fighting, mm -hmm. MCS fighting in Nairobi here, MCS fighting in Mombasa. Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has not taken someone to court to prosecute them for not abiding by integrity. And because the, public, the office you hold in public, you are holding it on behalf of Kenyans, and you should not disrespect that office. You should bring, bring honor to that office. We have not seen them saying you have behaved in a manner that does not bring honor to the office that you hold. Right. That's a failure on the part. And let me also emphasize that there are very few anti-corruption commissions in this world that work. Okay. Hong Kong was the first one that worked. In Kenya here, we have seen no, uh, no anti-corruption commissioner that has worked effectively. But when the anti-corruption commission was in the hands of Salim Saleh, when it was under the police, they did a better job than anyone else. Maybe we should reconsider, even if we say that our police is corrupt, once we give them the responsibility to deal with corruption, I think we can see better changes, better changes than we have seen. Right. They pursue cases of murder right. and, and bring people to, to, to account. What is it that we can give the police powers to deal with some of these issues and they will do them very effectively? I think so. You've spoken about the failure of the Anti-Corruption Commission in actually bringing uh, people to book. Uh, but is it a surprise to you that people haven't shown the greatest of interest in pursuing that top office at the EACC, uh, given its, its history? Of course, that's the EACC now has been a, a career destroyer. I mean, anyone good applying for that office knows very well that your days are numbered and you'll mess your career. Yes. It's just like applying for any other public post in, uh, uh, in this country. So what's our, our recourse? Uh, our, the public dialogue that we are talking about, uh, discussing the moral decadence in this society. We need to have a discussion around that. We, okay. And we haven't had that dialogue yet. All right. We, and, and we have not had that dialogue. We have had a dialogue, for instance, on things like ethnicity or tribalism in this country. That dialogue is in place. We need a dialogue on greed. We need a dialogue on morality and moral decadence in this country for yes. us to move forward. Yes. There always seems to be uh, the responsibility laid on the presidency, the buck stops with the presidency. Is it really uh, the silver uh, bullet? Does it lie with uh, one man uh, when, when to, the president it needs speaks? To, uh, it needs to provide leadership. It needs to provide leadership, and that's why I'm saying, for instance, the doors for doing anything hard now have closed. How much of that responsibility also lies on the citizenry? A lot. A lot. All the citizens bear responsibility. Or if we, if we citizens and the acceptance that we have a responsibility to make Kenya a better society, we would not be depending on the president that uh, he should give us guidance. Thank it you. is our failure actually as a society, and it's not the failure of one man alone. Yes, he has the responsibility to take to give us leadership, but we also showed that the burden of proving that we can do things better. And we need to do uh, to make a step forward and do things better. A good place to end this conversation at this time. It doesn't end here, although uh, it continues throughout the week.